Well, hello there. How is everyone? I hope you're all well on this stupendous, stupendous Sunday. That's it, baby. It's Sunday. And this is video one of one. So, we're sticking with the Jay Slater case this morning. Because, look, first of all, let's get the most important thing out of the way. You're looking absolutely amazing. And I hope you're having an awesome weekend. As you can hear, the birds are joining me this morning again. What is it with birds and the noise they make? I love the little things, but can't half make a racket. But look, yeah, so Jay Slater. We've been talking about this case for a little while. And we've done some videos on it. And, you know, what I've been trying to do throughout this kind of journey is to... Stuff comes out, things get said, reports come out. We've got people who are boots on the ground who are talking about the Jay Slater case. They're coming up with their theories and th feelings, what they think may have happened. And sometimes in order to do that, we've got to call some things out for being absolutely fucking ludicrous. Because some of the stories that are coming out are borderline, well, just, just absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And I think half of the time is it's this ridiculousness and the stories that we get pushed that kind of lead us to lose the reality of what's most likely to have happened in this situation. There was a report that came out a few hours ago yesterday and was talking about a waitress, um, you know, one of these servers who were serving drinks at this place where Jay was. And um, she'd come forward and said, look, I'd seen Jay at this party and he didn't look good he didn't look well at all he, he couldn't really stand um, she'd given him a bottle of water and you know just said how because she was of a similar age to Jay that this situation has kind of hit her and um, she's feeling for the family and you know it's, it kind of brought things home a little bit and I kind of thought to myself look with respect of this case and the story if you and we do that we've done this a couple of times we strip it back strip it back bare bones and we contemplate what the reality is and you know you hear and we talk about Occam's razor in a few cases you know what the absolute most likely scenario is in this is most likely the thing that happened but what we have to do is we have to pick the elements of this out that make the most sense and using those pieces of information we then have to extrapolate upon those and come up with a conclusion so what do we know we know that jay had a checkered a checkered past you know it, it, it had a bit of a checkered past he it was a bit of a fucking you know fucking whoop um yeah he had a bit of a checkered past he'd been involved in some shit that you know weren't great and that's kind of controlled the narrative of how people have seen him and seen how they feel about what has happened out there in the most likely scenario. And I think because of his sort of checkered past, it's been very easy for people to potentially believe that he was caught up in kind of this underworld situation. We, you know, yesterday we were talking about fucking yachts that he's potentially gone onto this yacht because he'd been involved in the theft of a, a watch can't even get the fucking watch right the watch that he had mentioned was a was an ap they're going with this rolex story the rolex has somehow been entwined in the pot of papers robbery where his place was knocked over and a rolex went missing and um you know i've probably helped you know push some of that along because i've i've covered it i've spoken about it and people have a tendency of not listening to everything they listen to elements of stories they listen to proportions of videos and then they come up with their own conclusion based on what they've seen from that small segment but this is the thing right so jay goes on holiday with some people now we know that around jay is some pretty sketchy people there are some sketchy people lucy's sketchy however you want to look at it she's sketchy whether she's out there and she goes sort of club hopping and she's involved in that scene and she helps push a few bits and pieces that seems a very likely story um 
but we don't know 100%. That just seems like the likely story. We also know that one of the people who was the last people to see him was someone who's been caught up in the trafficking world. And he just happens to be caught up with someone who is now a wealthy rapper, but in his history, he's been involved in the same exact thing and just up to, what was it, 2023, was involved in fraud. So we've got some funny, shady characters around. But it was listening to this story about this bar woman, you know, this bar girl, saying that he just didn't, he weren't well. He weren't well, I gave him water, and I think to myself, based on my own experience, you know, and we've all been, well, not all of us, but a lot of us have been there, you know, where we've been out to these sort of gigs. And then fast forward to the following morning, and that's where everything gets a little bit hazy, because I think to myself, if Jay was at this rave, right, and he's doing the stuff what they do at raves, and he's got to a point where someone is seeing that he ain't well, he's really unwell, they're giving him water, he's, he can hardly walk, he then ends up at this house with these two guys. Now, I'm thinking to myself, so these guys, they don't mention at any point that they take Jay back to theirs because he really isn't well. That he is unwell and he needs to be removed from the situation and taken somewhere to, to get himself feeling better. Now, they had an opportunity to say that. Kasim had an opportunity to come forward and say, look, I got him out and took him back to the the B and B because the fucking guy, he was he was unwell and it wasn't good for him staying there. But it seemed and I think to myself, if he weren't well and he was at this he was at this gig, so what happened to his actual friends, the people who had went out there with? Were they not keeping an eye on him at all? Why would they not have wanted for, to keep an eye on him and take him back to where they were? Why was it that Jay had to be taken to a more remote property in the back end of Beyond? And I'm thinking to myself, Occam's Razor is starting to play in here, where I think that you've got a guy who's gone out there, he's doing stuff that, as a, as a parent, you kind of really hope that your child doesn't get involved in. And he's got to the point where he's really unwell. He's then lifted from that event and taken to a secluded place. And lo and behold, he's not seen again. We see some picture, which is a final Snapchat picture, um, that we don't know is him. There's, there's nothing that says it's him on there. It's, it, it's literally of a, the front of somebody, and that could be absolutely anyone. And I think to myself, is there a possibility that that, and I've said this before, was it a possibility that this was generated, this picture, to make it look like Jay was still compass mentis when in fact he wasn't? You know, Kasim's story about how seemingly Jay wanted to go back and continue partying, um, you know, all this bits and pieces, and it just don't make sense to me. And the more I think about it, and the more that, We've now got a site and that I don't think is a hundred percent accurate. Like the the woman who claims that she saw Jay, did she see Jay? Was it only Jay who went back to this B and B, or did in fact they all go back to the B and B? And is that where something then happened that is then led to covering up what happened? Was Jay's phone intentionally placed somewhere where it would make it look like Jay had set off and embarked on this journey? And the more I think about it, the more that this just seems, you know, without fucking yachts or that kind of shit, without all these stupid stories, my, my thought can't help but think, I can't see Jay walking on his own. I can't see Jay after a night out getting smashed off his noodle to then wake up or not even have been asleep and just decide right now I'm, I'm up for an 11 hour walk. That to me just don't make sense. But it's these little devil in the detail pieces where people had an opportunity to come forward and, and be honest and open and they didn't do that. 
Kasim, the fact that Kasim didn't mention that Jay was really unwell, and that's why he took him back to the B and B. That for me is a huge red flag. Why not be open? Why not be honest and say? But he didn't. He made it look like Jay was completely compromised and wanted to continue partying. So they've almost made it look like Jay was, you know, he was raring to go. Do you know what I mean? He was. He was still wanting to party. And the next day he was like, "Nah, I'm going to go and get some food. I'm going to go and get, go on this walk, and I'm good. I'm going to go." And that to me, I just ain't buying it. I just ain't buying it. For me, Occam's razor is he went out there with friends. He got out of his depth. He got unwell. He got took back to a place that was out in the middle of nowhere and something happened to him. And the whole group of them decided, rather than be open and be honest and drop themselves potentially right in the shit, they decided to cover up. And what then went on from there is a group of people who hid what actually happened to Jay. Now this is gonna split the room, but I think it's a lot more plausible than that Jay went and got on a, a yacht because he stole a watch and he's in hiding somewhere or something like that. Occam's razor. What's Occam's razor for you? Let me know down below and I'll catch you all in the next one.